Welcome to Fun with Drilling Engineering. Behind me, you can see the periodic table showing all the many elements we should know. So obviously, we'll talk about chemistry today. But relax, we'll just look into some of the few elements, which are hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. Hydrogen is the simplest of all atoms. It is the most common element in space. Even some planets and even the sun consist of it. You should also notice that hydrogen is very sociable. It loves to combine with other elements. The next element we'll look at is carbon. Carbon atoms are much more complex than hydrogen. And carbon is also very common in nature. Carbon atoms are very flexible while combining with each other so they can generate different structures, such as graphite, even diamond, for example. But these details are not so interesting here. We would like to keep everything as simple as possible. So let's imagine that atoms are little balls with arms. In our mind, hydrogen has just one arm. And the carbon has four arms. Well, as stated before, these atoms do not like to be alone. They prefer to socialize. This is why each hydrogen atom with one hand grabs another hydrogen atom. And together, they form a hydrogen molecule, which we call H2 molecule. Similarly, the carbon atoms connect with other carbon atoms. But because it has so many arms, it easily gets confused. Therefore, in a simplified way, it seems to be a good idea for the carbon atoms to mix with hydrogen atoms. So here we can see that each arm of a carbon atom can easily grab the arm of a hydrogen atom. And this results in a beautiful methane molecule. This is what we often call natural gas. A methane molecule consists of one carbon atom and four hydrogen atom. Thus, it belongs to the group of hydrocarbons and the methane is the simplest of all hydrocarbons. But as stated earlier, carbon also likes to combine with other carbon atoms. Therefore, there are also hydrocarbons when several hydrocarbons come together to form a chain. The carbon atoms form the chain core and the free hands grab all the hydrogen atoms. These chains can be as long as you want, as you see on this table. The shorter chains are gases and the longer chains are in a fluid state, I will call them crude oil. Of course, there are many other potential complex combinations and structures of hydrocarbons. But let's not go into it here. Let's leave all that for chemistry classes. For now, we'll just focus on methane. So what do we do with natural gas? Mostly it is burned, for example, to cook, as you can see here. So what happens when we burn methane? A flame requires three things. Heat, a combustible material, which is in our case methane, and the third, very important, oxygen. Oxygen is a really cool element. As you see in our simple model, we imagine that it has two arms. And just like all other atoms, oxygen atoms love to come together with other atoms and form oxygen molecules. And they stay together for a while. But when there's a party and there are methane molecules around, then the party is not enough for them. All other atoms fall in love with oxygen atoms and they want to join oxygen atoms. For example, the small hydrogen atoms here leave their carbon atom and engage with the oxygen atom. So two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom form a water molecule. The carbon also doesn't wait for long. It looks for two free oxygen atoms to form CO2 molecules. So each methane molecule decomposes to form CO2 and water during combustion. Water, of course, is not a problem. It is completely harmless. But CO2, carbon dioxide, is a greenhouse gas and we want to avoid it as much as possible. Unfortunately, 
Our modern society is still dependent on fossil fuels, meaning burning of oil, gas, and coal. But if we still burn hydrocarbons, it is at least important for the environment that as little carbon dioxide as possible is generated. And here, natural gas plays a very special advantage over oil or coal. Of all hydrocarbons, methane has the highest proportion of hydrogen to carbon atoms and thus produces less significant carbon dioxide when burned compared to oil or coal. This is one reason it is considered a very important bridge technology within the energy framework. When used, it simply produces the least environmentally harmful emissions. But we have to take care that no methane escapes unburned into the atmosphere. This is because methane in the atmosphere is a very strong greenhouse gas that contributes even stronger to global warming than CO2. So we have to be very careful with the production and the use of natural gas and we have to work very carefully. So how to do this and all other things we teach in our program Geotechnics, Mining and Geoenergy Systems here in Freiburg. We'll be happy to see you in our lecture. Look off.